we have been waiting months for the new update to the equipment system in rise of kingdoms and this morning an in-game mail was sent out to all players in rise of kingdoms by rise of kingdoms officially that detailed the upcoming plans and changes to the equipment system so today we're gonna go over all of that and i'm gonna tell you guys everything that we know but first what's going on guys cheers okay now i do have a disclaimer for this in-game mail and before we go over it i just want to give a huge shout out to bloody pickle over on discord that is quite the discord name okay but they were the ones that actually took a screenshot of this in-game mail this morning and the reason that we're relying on these screenshots is because this official mail was actually deleted shortly after being sent out to all the players now i suspect that the reason that this mail was deleted is because there was actually a typo in some of the infantry stats that they showed and yes ladies and gentlemen we're gonna go over some of the new stats you're gonna get with this upgraded legendary equipment so make sure you stay tuned to later in the video for that but I just want to take this moment to remind you guys that until the system is in the game it can change at any time that goes for any information or any news that you get about rise of kingdoms outside of the game itself but because the equipment system changes that are outlined in this mail sound extremely consistent with what we've already sort of heard through the grapevine as well as the fact that this is an official source of information this is directly from the game itself this is not a leak or anything like that like this is from the rok group i'm still going to cover it here in the video even though the mail was deleted because i think that this is probably like 90 95 99 percent complete i think this is the new equipment system that we're going to get so let's go over everything here they say greetings governor after talking with governors in our recent developer roundtable about iconic equipment we've revised our original plan for adjusting equipment and have drafted a new plan we hope to discuss these changes to iconic equipment with everyone in the next face to face with the developers so we should be getting more information very very soon our new plan is as follows after the next update with the exception of gathering equipment and the trial of the lost kingdom weapon all legendary quality equipment can still be made iconic now this is important they specify legendary equipment only and we're going to talk about that later in the video so stay tuned okay iconic equipment will be divided into five upgradable tiers all current iconic equipment in the game will be iconic one tier okay so five new tiers if your equipment is already iconic right now it is already at tier one so that means there's going to be four more new tiers for that piece the items required to upgrade a piece of equipment to the next iconic tier will depend on its type and which tier it's being upgraded to okay so that means and this is very consistent with what we have already cavalry gear is already heavy on leather use and infantry gear is already heavy on iron use and archer gear is already heavy on ebony use i suspect that moving forward it would be logical to assume that it would probably continue to function in the same way and also which tier it's being upgraded to implies that as you upgrade to the next tier it will probably cost more materials to go to the following tier which makes a lot of sense upgrading to iconic one will mainly cost iconic crystals which is what it costs already it costs one iconic crystal plus gold the fact that they said mainly implies that they might add something else i'm not going to read too much into that i suspect that they're not going to change the way that you first get your first iconic while subsequent tiers will mainly cost equipment blueprints and equipment materials okay so this again going back to the first part of this bullet point it sounds like after you've gotten your first iconic tier by using your iconic crystal and gold going to iconic tier two is going to be sort of similar to just refining the gear like it's going to cost blueprints and it's going to cost materials which is what refining costs and that's also what crafting costs so it sounds like all the tiers past iconic one are just going to be the regular things that we're already getting blueprints and materials so that's actually pretty good different equipment will gain different attribute bonuses after being made iconic tap the link at the end of this message to preview the iconic bonuses for the dragon's breath bow weapon sturdy boots of the eternal empire boots and sacred dominion weapon after a piece of equipment is upgraded to the next iconic tier it will inherit its previous refinement level 
and special talent so if you currently have a piece of gear with iconic level one meaning you you just have an iconic piece right now and you're 25 percent of the way to getting a special talent if you upgrade it to iconic two it will still be 25 percent of the way to a special talent or if you already have the special talent you're going to keep that special talent as you upgrade which is really good essentially what this means is the refinement system and special talent system is completely independent of the iconic system okay so whether or not you have progress towards the talent or whether or not you have the talent um, it will influence your stats which we're going to look at later which is actually crazy but your iconic level is something else entirely so you don't have to worry about losing progress or losing your special talent very good stuff there it goes on to say it will also gain a bonus to its attributes and we're going to take a look at what they mean by that in just a second equipment set effects will not be affected when upgrading one of the constituent pieces to a new iconic tier so it looks like the two piece set bonus four piece set bonus and six piece set bonus uh, they will not likely change at all regardless of the iconic level of your equipment okay so if all of your hellish wasteland stuff is iconic five it's probably still going to get these same set bonuses which is pretty nice I think if these also increased with the level of your sets um I think we would start to see like a crazy amount of stats from these things which would kind of make the stats from your commanders and armaments useless so I'm glad to see that you know this is you don't have to worry about this you just get your set bonus and that's it and finally your kingdom must be in season one or later to access the iconic equipment system okay so brand new players aren't going to get access to this that's totally fine they have a million other things to do they don't have to worry about this which is actually good I think that this would just be really confusing for the new player experience so holding this to later is probably a good thing now bullet point three says that you can tap a link and luckily we have two screenshots of that link these are two completely different screenshots which means that this is not a leak or anything like that like this we have two sources of this screenshot which means we can rely on this to be accurate with what they revealed okay so let's break this down here we have the dragon's breath bow this is the archer set weapon and as a reminder the legendary set weapons are level 45 and the legendary kvk weapons are level 50. okay so keep that in mind as we're going through these stats if you have the dragon's breath bow and you get it to iconic level one it's going to get three archer base attack points which is already what it does in the game right now if you add an iconic crystal to the dragon's breath bow you get three archer base attack points so everything in this first column does not change at all you also see in the parentheses a plus four and that is the amount of stats that you get if your equipment piece is special talented and again this has not changed if you have a special talented dragon's breath bow right now with an iconic crystal you will get four base attack points instead of three again no changes there the second tier so this would be iconic tier two your dragon's breath bow will ignore two percent of an enemy troops defense and if you have a special talent it bumps that up to three percent that is unlike anything we've ever seen before for an equipment piece in rise of kingdoms okay that's actually crazy the third tier here so iconic tier three is going to give you 800 troop capacity so you could bring more troops if you have iconic tier three equipment and that is huge okay if you have a special talent on that piece you're going to bring even more troops to the battlefield and one thing you're going to notice here is that tier three for your iconic equipment is the same for all of them it's always it looks like based on this it's always going to be unit or troop capacity now they do specify unit capacity and so I'm wondering if you launch a rally is this going to increase the capacity of that rally right because it doesn't say troop capacity which is the wording that we are typically used to when we look at you know like Julius Caesar's fourth skill Mehmed's fourth skill we we call it troop capacity and we know that at least in the case for Caesar and Freddy those don't affect the rally size um, the meds does I don't know how this is going to work I suspect if I'm being honest with you I suspect this is just troop capacity so I'm not going to look too much into it I bet that's what it is but it's worth noting that they do use a different word here so it could be different iconic tier four will give you plus two percent damage to troops on the map and if you have a special talent it goes up to three percent so that is from what I can tell here 
all damage and this is not consistent this does change now for tier 5 iconic for the dragon's breath bow we have a 10 percent chance to gain 5% damage for two seconds when launching a basic attack with a five second cooldown. This goes up to six and a half percent if you have the special talent. What I think is interesting here is it seems like tier four is just better than tier five. I mean, I would rather have 2% all damage all the time than a 10% chance for 5% all damage for two seconds for two seconds. I don't know how that's going to work here. One thing that you will note is that this is on the map, whereas this is not. So this actually will not work in a garrison. So if you're if you have an archer garrison, this will do nothing. Okay. And also I suspect this will probably do nothing as well. So some of these uh, bonuses are really just for open field fighting, which I find really interesting, really unique. And I think that maybe the developers took so long to implement the system because they don't want to break the current dynamic of rallying garrisons. We're going to get again, talk about that a little bit later. Now going to the sturdy boots of the eternal empire here, we have another set piece. Obviously it's the boots and this is for infantry and one thing you'll notice here is that it says archer stats okay and so i think this is why they removed the mail because this is the boots for infantry and so what i suspect is that all of this is correct except it's going to be infantry stats so at iconic tier one the current tier you get three base health for infantry that's the same all boots in the game give you that okay at iconic tier two it looks like we're going to be getting infantry unit attack plus one percent now it's worth noting here that clearly the weapon effect at tier two is much better than the boot effect at tier two and one thing that i want to point out here is that the boots actually cost less materials to craft the boots cost 40 materials in order to craft it and 20 million gold whereas the weapon for the same set is 90 materials and 20 million gold so it would make sense that the bonuses you get for the weapons would be better because i suspect it's going to cost more to increase the iconic level of the weapons okay and as a matter of fact if you look at the helmet for example this is 60 materials so the helmet costs more materials than the boots as well and so i suspect that the bonuses to the weapon are going to be the best and then the bonuses to the helmet and chest piece and legs are going to be the second best and then the gloves and the boots are probably going to be some of the less impressive stats that's my best guess here and for iconic tier three for the boots you're going to get 300 troop capacity and so even though you're still getting troop capacity just like the weapon it's just lower it's less you're going to get a less benefit for that tier three again that makes sense i suspect it will be cheaper at tier four you're going to get five percent march speed for infantry and it's six and a half percent if you have the special talent that's really good guys this is really really good this is what infantry needed and i'm really happy to see an additional source of march speed for infantry now is it going to be the case that maybe all boots give you five percent march speed at tier four that could be the case we don't have other examples to compare it to and if that's the case then this is kind of it's null. it makes no difference at all if everyone in the game is five percent faster infantry is still the slowest troop type right so that's kind of a bummer but if the boots bonus for infantry is unique to infantry in that they're the only ones that get march speed here that's going to be really interesting now would i rather five percent march speed or two percent damage i'd rather the two percent damage obviously but because this is boots i suspect this will be again cheaper to get tier four for boots than weapon so it should make sense that it's not as good of an effect and finally tier five says infantry unit march speed plus five percent while outside of alliance territory and infantry unit attack plus one percent those numbers are modified if you have the special talent so again it looks like you'll get a total of 10 percent march speed if you are using a tier 5 iconic boots and you're outside of territory because you do the math here plus one percent attack that's interesting finally we go to the sacred dominion and this is the kvk weapon for cavalry for tier one nothing changes again it's the same cavalry unit base attack plus three for tier two we have ignore two and a half percent of an enemy troops attack okay so this is really interesting this is very similar to the other weapon that we have an example of here but it's a little bit more okay so it's a different stat where defense versus attack but it's two and a half percent instead of 
two percent so it's likely going to be the case that the kvk weapons will have very similar effects to the set piece weapons but it's just going to be a little bit better because it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive to get the iconic uh, upgrades for those pieces okay we already know that the kvk weapons are a higher level than the set piece weapons okay so it makes sense that they would get more stats now one of the things that i just want to mention here is that they actually lowered the cost to craft the kvk weapons i don't know if you guys remember this but here you could see the kvk hammer of the sun and moon is 90 materials and the infantry set piece weapon is also 90 materials now it costs more gold and it's harder to get the blueprint but the fact that it costs the same is crazy now a lot of people were asking me like omniarch do you think it's fair to the people that crafted it before this change and just to be clear they've already given you a refund for this there was a mail mentioning they would give you the refund and then i didn't actually see a mail confirming the refund but i got the materials i checked my inventory i got the material i got all the difference between what it did cost and what it costs now everyone was already given that if they crafted it within the set period so it is fair because everyone got a refund so like we'll just put that to rest right there but what i suspect will happen is that even though the weapons cost the same amount to craft i bet you it's going to cost more to upgrade the kvk weapon weapons and therefore they're going to get more stats that's my best guess okay for the third iconic tier for the kvk sacred dominion weapon you get a thousand troop capacity as opposed to the 800 for the non-kvk weapon that's crazy for the fourth tier it says you get two and a half percent damage to troops on the map so again a half percent more than what we see for the non-kvk weapon so we know it's going to be slightly better and it looks like based on this that perhaps all the weapons all the legendary weapons at tier four are going to give you some amount of bonus damage whether two or two and a half percent and finally for tier five you have a ten percent chance to gain a six and a half percent damage boost for two seconds when launching a basic attack with a five second cooldown so again it's exactly the same as we saw for the non kvk weapon but just a little bit better okay and so again we don't know any more information about what each subsequent tier is going to cost and so i'm just going to speculate that based on the first thing that we have here because it says the items required will depend on its tier and which tier it's being upgraded to i suspect that going from tier two to tier three is going to be cheaper than going from tier four to tier five right i think that just makes sense now another thing that you're going to note here is that they don't mention when this system is going to come but we actually know because of a recent video from chiskel gaming i will try to link in the description below if i remember correctly but he did mention that he talked to a community manager i believe he said and they said that they intended to release this new equipment system within the first quarter of 2024 so that means that i mean the latest it would come would be march of 2024. i suspect we will see it sooner than that and chiskel actually said that he felt that way as well he thought that it would be probably january possibly earlier what we do know based on this mail assuming that they resend this mail without the typo soon uh is that if they're going to discuss it in the next face to face with the developers they'll probably discuss it probably by the end of this month or early next month and then because they say that they plan to implement this into the next update it says right here after the next update so the next update after the next face-to-face -face with the developers hopefully you're following me here okay so possibly the christmas update right we could be getting this for the christmas update or the new year's update that's probably when we're going to see this honestly which is really exciting now i will also just say that I will still be holding onto my my blueprints, my materials. I'm not crafting anything until we see what this system is in the game. And also, uh, the only thing that I the only I broke that rule. I did craft a ring of the a ring of doom for this my KVK that I'm in now. Um, so you know, if I get screwed for that, it is what it is. But I just wanted another ring of doom, and I suspect that the ring of doom is still gonna be good regardless of what this system is. So there you go. But the good news is that this system is almost here, and I think it makes sense why it took the devs so long to implement this change right initially they were just going to drop new equipment pieces and everyone was pissed off about that now they've basically built an entire new system into the game and they needed to make sure that all of these different effects for all the different legendary equipment in the game already has to ba be balanced right and so it makes a lot of sense that uh, it would take a lot of time for them to develop this system also like i said before we see you know march speed effects this stuff right here has no effect on garrisons right uh this stuff here 
uh, for tier four for both the weapons has no effect on garrisons unit capacity like troop capacity has no effect on like rallies or garrisons right and so um a lot of the stuff is you know a small amount of stats here uh we also have some ignoring of stats as well um one thing that i'll point out though is that you know for the fifth tier for infantry boots there this actually you know unless this is the same for all boots in the game right like let's say all legendary boots give you march speed for tier four and tier five unless that's the case infantry uh kind of get like kind of screwed here right because they they get march speed for two of the tiers which means basically nothing here affects rallies and garrisons whereas for rallies for archers and calves with the weapon like tier four and tier five apply for the rally same thing here and tier five applies for garrisons as well whereas again tier five will not apply for garrisons for infantry again we'll know more about that later when we see all the other effects for all the other boots so I don't want to jump the gun here and say infantry get screwed again okay but uh again the march speed is very good for infantry they do really need that regardless okay now let's just sort of discuss my opinion for this system and I have a couple of thoughts okay first of all the mail says that upgrading the iconic level of equipment uh, obviously the first one costs an iconic crystal after that it says blueprints and materials but that's also how we refine things as well right so should we be focusing on refining equipment or should we be focusing on leveling up the iconic level of equipment and i think it really depends i think you know obviously if you already have the special talent then you're just going to get more benefit out of each subsequent level but I would be, I, I feel like it's better probably. I mean, it depends on how many materials, right? Like if going from iconic level one to iconic level two costs 150 materials, like something insanely expensive, then, you know, it's, it's a comparable price to getting the special talent. But if it's not extremely expensive, I think it's going to be better to just increase the iconic levels of your equipment before working on the special talent because the special talent you know refining something is randomized right you refine something and then you get a random amount of progress whereas if it costs a similar amount to increase the iconic level then you get a guaranteed improvement every time you get all the way up to level five right so it's really interesting to see that you know refining and iconic levels are I mean, according to the mail, they're going to allegedly use the same materials, the same input, right? And that's a little bit weird to me. Um, I wonder why they didn't just give you more iconic, like, you know, iconic level two to go from one to two, maybe cost two iconic crystals. And then from two to three, it would be five iconic. You know, I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they feel like there's just not enough iconic crystals in the game to really get players to like go all the way. I also, you know, they, they said blueprints and materials, but they didn't say it would only be blueprints and materials. I think it would be really interesting if like to get from tier four to tier five, like to finish a piece, if it costed more iconic crystals, um, that's totally possible as well. So that's just something interesting that I noticed now the other thing that i want to talk about here is the epic and blue pieces okay uh this is a, this, this is this is kind of a sad day for for free to play players uh and low spenders and mainly a lot of a lot of people right a lot of people still use purple and blue gear and we've talked about like the gatekeeper shield has held on to the throne for being like one of the best pieces in the game even as a blue piece right and you know with this upcoming change like with this new iconic system purple and blue gear are dead they're dead you're not gonna like that's it they're guard they're garbage right like when they introduced the iconic system originally that was already a pretty big blow to the uh purple and blue gear right because more base stats is multiplicative and so you get like exponentially more value out of more base stats than you do out of stat percentages so like already the iconic system really made these uh purple pieces like hanging on by a thread and now with the ability to increase the iconic level right like you obviously can't get an iconic purple piece so as players get more and more iconic levels on their legendary gear the purple and blue gear is going to be worse and worse over time and so um if you have been relying on purple and blue gear to fight in kvk just know that over the course of the next year uh you are going to start losing your trades more and more and more unless you start to craft legendary gear that's just the i mean that's just the reality right the good news is that because the equipment system has been in the game for so long a lot of people have started to move away from purple and blue gear they have started to focus on you know more legendary gear even for me like like I have the hammer of sun and moon I talked about how this was kind of a regret of mine right maybe now that we have the system maybe it won't be but you know even for me I've gone ahead and crafted some of these pieces that 
aren't necessarily a must have right like it is not a must have to have the dragon's breath bow for someone like me who is not rally or garrison lead or somebody who's not even an archer main i'm only running one archer march and even for, even still i craft with dragon's breath bow right so even for me i'm starting to craft pieces that are less needed uh i would say like for example you know like the hope cloak is needed you needed to replace the chest piece for infantry with legendary as soon as possible the gold helm of the eternal empire is needed you need to replace the purple helmet for inventory as soon as possible those are needed pieces the legendary weapon not really needed and yet i'm still already to the point where i'm crafting them so all that to say it is more important now than ever to be focusing on just building one or two good sets before moving on right because again as we progress through the next year these purple pieces and blue pieces are going to be worse and worse for you okay so don't spread out your materials across seven different armies if all seven armies have some purple pieces right we need to at this point like as a community it is you, you have to start working away from these blue and purples otherwise six to 12 months from now again you're going to be in a really bad spot when it comes to getting trades that is my suspicion i could be completely wrong about that and it could depend on what the stats are for all the other pieces that they didn't reveal in this mail okay but this is just my kind of premature early warning for you that uh this time next year i think blue and purple pieces are basically dead and i think that's kind of a bummer for new players right like uh it was always nice to know that like as a brand new player you could rock the heart of the saint for like years and be totally fine with it right you didn't really need the base attack stats you didn't really need the iconic crystal there or the special talent on the legendary weapon like you really could rock this for a long time and feel good about it and now as a brand new player um as the old players start to add iconic levels to their legendary stuff you're going to be more and more left behind uh if you don't also start doing that and that's kind of a bummer so this is my warning to you start saving for legendary gear but also and i know this is going to sound contradictory don't craft anything right now okay wait for this system to actually be in the game after all they did retract this mail okay so they're you know i suspect that they retracted it for the typo but they could have retracted it for something else entirely okay so keep that in mind this is this is a retracted official mail i think this is what the system will be but just keep that in mind do not craft anything if you can help it because this system is coming now if you did craft things do i think you're screwed no i actually don't i think that this iconic system is going to use existing things that you've been collecting okay so i actually don't think that you're going to be punished for having crafted something so that's the good news but until it's in the game i'm not gonna probably craft anything okay that is everything that we know about the new upcoming changes to the new equipment system coming to rise of kingdoms within the next probably three to four months if you want more up-to-date information about this equipment system and more breaking news for rise of kingdoms make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video also while you're down there drop a thumbs up on this video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there comment down below what you think about the changes to this system i actually think that this is a really exciting change for the equipment system it's more things to work on and more things to work towards it's better than just making all your old stuff useless right but i am still a little bit cautious about the fact that purple and blue gear is going to get much worse over the next year so let me know what you think down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace